right, hiya. This is part B of question four for you. Now, I'm assuming you've done part A because you said you were fine with that and you should have got the y squared was equal to 4x. Okay, but we're not going to use that Cartesian form at this stage. I suppose we could do, but we're not going to. Right, so this point A here, that is at the point, uh, what does it tell us? It tells us the point A. The point A lies on the curve where T is equal to A. Okay, at A. Therefore, if we go back to our original equations that x was equal to t squared and y is equal to 2t, if we pop a into both of those, you get the coordinates of a is a squared a. Okay, all is good now. Right, so we've got a tangent to a. And the question that we're trying to answer says, by considering the gradient of the curve, so the gradient of the curve Gradient of the curve is dy by dx, okay? So the gradient of this curve is our dy by dx at this point a, which is when t equals a. So if we do dx by dt, and we do dy by dt, and then we say dy by dx is dy by dt times dt by dx, using a bit of cheeky chain rule, then we have 2 times 1 over 2t, which gives us 1 over t. So obviously then, at a, t is equal to a. So therefore, the gradient at a will be 1 over a. Okay, so then after we've done that, we've got the gradient of a now, and we've got a point on this line here then we can then work out what the equation of this line is. Now, I'm going to call this point here t, just for fun, okay, on the, on the uh, y-axis there. So the equation of our tangent, or the equation of at, of the line going through at, if you like, because that's the tangent, will be y minus a equals 1 over a, that's our tangent, times x minus a squared. Now, if we mess about with that for a little bit, expand your brackets and so on, you get y equals x over a plus a. Okay, that's your equation of your tangent. That's important. Right. If we then find this point t here, t is where our x is zero. Okay, so, and it lies on this line here. So when x is zero, y is equal to a because 0 divided by a is nothing, add a, it's just a. So this point here is 0, a. Okay? Right. So now, if we draw a line, if we draw a triangle here, we also know that the gradient of that line is the change in y over the change in x. Okay? So the change in x here, is going to be, sorry, this should be 2a here, shouldn't it? Sorry, done that wrong there. That should be 2a there. Right, so this change in x here, it's going from 0 up to a squared. So that there, let's draw the triangle down here. Okay, so this is our triangle t, a. Okay, so our length there is a squared. This length here, our change in y, is going from a up to 2a. So the difference there is a. So 2a minus a is a. And we've got, if that angle there is theta, as in the diagram, this line here is parallel to your x-axis, so it's also parallel to this line here. So that line, that angle there, sorry, must also be theta. Okay, back to there. So we can say from there, tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, so a over a squared which is 1 over a. And that's the result that we were after from the question. Okay, that's what we're trying to show. So we did two things there. We found dy by dx, and then we also used changing y over changing x. Okay. All right, now for part B, to find tan of gamma, uh, phi, that's phi, that thing there, right, Right, so let's just, we'll start with a fresh diagram. 
because we don't need to know anything about theta for this bit, do we? Do we? No, I don't think we do. Right, so we've still got this thing going on. And set this time, that's A, this is B. And this angle here was, is phi. It's called phi. Right, so what do we know? We know that B is 1, 0. And we know that A is A squared 2A. Right, so we can say that this length here, this length here is going to be A squared minus 1. And this length here is going to be 2a. Okay, so tan of phi is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, so 2a over a squared minus 1. And that's the answer for part b. That was a lot easier than the other one. So. Right, for part b, part 3, show that tan of 2 theta equals tan of phi. Okay, now you're given that tan theta is 1 over a and tan of phi is 2a over a squared. So even if you couldn't do the first two bits, you should be able to do this last bit. So tan of 2 theta, right, tan of 2 theta, we know because we know our double angle formula is 2 tan theta over 1, what, sorry, 1 minus tan squared theta. Okay, now we know that tan theta is we're back to the question tan theta is 1 over a and that's over 1 minus tan squared theta so that's 1 over a all squared and then it's just a question of algebraic manipulation so you've got 2 times 1 over a gives you 2 over a that's over 1 minus 1 over a squared let's multiply everything on the bottom by a squared I'm just going to keep that on the top like that for now. Okay, that gives us a squared minus 1 all over a squared. Now, as you know, when you're dividing by something in your denominator, you can take it up to the top. This a should come down here, but it doesn't matter because we're going to cancel this out now. So that gives us a 2a squared over a. So that gives you 2a. And on the bottom, you've got a squared minus 1, which is equal to tan of 5. Because you found that before. Duh, 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 duh. End of proof. Okay. Is that the end of that question? Oh, it's the end of that question. Hooray.